Speeding investigations is critical for faster incident mitigation. But there are factors that impede investigations. These factors include having too many data sources to search, forcing security analysts to slowly comb through multiple data sources or develop and run playbooks to get the context they need. Because the data is from a single point in time, it may not be up to date, leading to ineffective decisions. Security analysts need a way to enrich and re-enrich data as investigations progress. When insights are derived during investigation, data is often disconnected when shared across external tools like ticketing systems, email, or instant messengers. The following demonstration will show how Securonix Investigate shortens investigation time by automatically enriching content and streamlining information sharing. So what we see here is a Securonix SOC command center. Uh, it contains the top violators, threats, violations, kill chain analysis, and so on. So this is where the day of an analyst starts. So for the purpose of this demo, we'll be triaging a robotic baconing use case. Uh, let's try that without uh, investigate platform um, and then with it to see the differences there. So today for level one analysts, they are usually provided with standard operating procedures into, in, as to how to go about triaging these incidents. So in this, in this particular case, the analyst needs to understand uh, if the internal IP address is a watchlisted admin host or, or it contains or it's a critical asset um, and um, search for the external IP address in multiple threat intel platforms um, to ensure that uh, there is no, nothing that's uh, malicious associated with any of those um, external IP addresses. So in this particular instance, the CMDB is on an Excel sheet and the analyst searches for it and, uh, and it happens to be a watch listed admin host. So the priority of this particular incident naturally um, you know, increased by multiple folds because it's a watch listed admin host. Now the analyst gets the um, external host and searches for it in virus total. Virus total basically says that there is no uh, malicious activity associated with that particular IP address. And then um, for the purpose of uh, ensuring that there is enough uh, velocity, the analyst moves on to the next uh, distinct URL that's listed on here and searches for it in, in alien world. There are no related pulses. The analyst enters all of that information into the case management system and closes the incident or it, you know, uh, he or she passes on to the next uh, level two analyst uh, for further triaging if required. Now, we clearly saw we had to compromise uh, thoroughness for the sake of speed, um, right? Because there are so many violations that, um, that gets generated and there is not enough time for the analyst to, uh, to follow the standard operating procedures to the T's. Now, let's see how Securonix Investigate can help the analyst in this phase. So I'll be choosing the focus mode and um, I'll, I'll just scan for all of these entities here. What Investigate basically did was it, uses, it used cognitive analysis here. It captured all of the critical IOCs that are, um, that are on the screen. It spread its wings. It searched for about 180 integrations that it has. And it has gathered all the relevant information that the analyst needs to a single place. Now the key differentiator here is the data found the analyst rather than the analyst searching for data as it happened in the previous case. So let's, let's quickly look at this here. The internal IP address which we search for in CMDB is already watchlisted to be an admin host. The analyst didn't have to leave the platform to get that information. Uh, the destination address 81.53 which where we saw in virus total, it's a, a host that does not contain any malicious activity that was associated with it. It's actually observed for beaconing or C2 activity uh, in NDNS tunneling. Now, these are information that was shared as annotations into the platform by the threat hunting team, threat research team, or the uh, cyber threat intel team. Wherever they got that information from, they've shared it with, um, with, the, rest of the, um, with the rest of the SOC team. And they have been able to leverage it without having to search if anyone has communicated about this. Um, and then the free mass DNS here, 
um, which uh, which we did not see any pulses that were associated. It's uh, you know is is actually associated with Carbonac Fin Seven Syndicate, uh, and, and they've been one of uh, the notorious gangs in the last uh, you know couple of years. Now, it becomes extremely easy for the analyst to um, you know to add all of this information into the case management system and take necessary actions to block this. Now let's look, let's quickly look at another example here. So in this particular case, the CISO of an organization has sent an email saying that um, no, this, this is from the C, uh, CSA, or the FBI, and uh, and the threat intel team um, should be scanning for all of these IP addresses. Now there are several IOCs that are tagged for each of these vulnerabilities here. Now the analysts uh, or, or the uh, cyber threat intel team consumes all of this information and hunts for it once. And then it goes, uh, it goes unnoticed because there is no automation for us to capture all of this information and feed it into the loop of, of, of threat investigation. So with investigate today, what we can basically do is add these as annotations. Um, right, I can go say that this is the IP address and it's associated with log4j and I can add it into a specific channel here. In this particular case, I call the channel as log4j IOCs. Now, these are channels, look at them, consider them as a Slack channels which are dedicated for certain purpose. Um, I can also say that, um, you know, it's associated with uh, critical IOCs or I can just put it into a general channel and pe anyone who's subscribed to any of these channels would get the update that, uh, you know, there has, there has been a new update to this channel and, um, and then they can leverage that information while they're triaging. So in this particular case, as we discussed earlier, we would just go and add it to the log4j um, IOCs channel and uh, add this annotation. Now this is done by the CTI team. Now when the analyst, SOC analyst is investigating an incident um, in the SOC command center that we saw earlier, and if they encounter any of those IP addresses, they don't have to go search it, look at emails or search for it, um, right? Uh, the the in Securonics Investigate platform would basically throw up saying that uh, I know about that IP address, right? It would start screaming that I know about that IP address uh, and it was tagged as log4j, uh, right? And it was added by this particular user and this time, right? If we can go check this out, it was added by John Doe about a month ago. And uh, and there is also an ability for the analyst to upvote or downvote it, right? You know, all of the social elements that we have uh, to increase the credibility of this information is there. Uh, people can go add a comment saying that agreed this is critical or anything of that sort. So all of that information can be leveraged by uh, SOC analysts here. So now again triaging those uh, incident without having to leave the screen becomes much more um, easier. Now let's look quickly look at another example here. Oftentimes critical information uh, about a about a threat, about a threat actor's behavior or any IOCs, all of that information is usually shared uh, in communication channels like Slack, Teams, emails, um, right? And, and there is no automation today that exists which can gather all of this information from uh, from these communication platforms and make it available for the analyst during the time of investigation. Now these platforms are not designed for search, are not designed for threat hunting. So naturally it doesn't support that purpose uh, today. And what we have done is built an integration with these channels, um, you know, with these communication channels that we can use. So in this particular case, Solar has basically said that there's pen test that's being performed on these hosts. So SOC analysts ignore the noise. Now I look at these, I look at these sessions, I look at these messages and they're not relevant to me. Right, so no necessary action is taken. I don't go necessarily add them into the whitelist. Uh, right, it's left out. It just stays on Slack. And when I need that information, it it's usually not available. So in this particular case, let's say um, that this message is here and no action is taken by the SOC analyst. But Securonix investigate. What it can do is also integrate with these platforms 
and um, and naturally go fetch relevant information here. It's it, it screams saying that hey, pen test is in progress, so ignore. And um, you know any amount of time that was going to be spent on triaging this incident is safe for the analyst now, naturally increasing the mean time to detect and respond to threats. So this is the anal this is the platform that's being leveraged by our analysts, by our threat hunters. We are eating our dog food today, um, and it's extremely beneficial for our threat hunters and our threat research team.